I'm Brian Zintruck of PipelineOnline.ca. I used to be a pipeliner and I've spent the last 15 years reporting on energy in Saskatchewan. PipelineOnline.ca provides comprehensive coverage of light oil, heavy oil, lithium, helium, power production including coal, wind, solar, geothermal, natural gas and nuclear. There's a lot happening in Saskatchewan's energy sector and Pipeline Online is there for all of it. No one else comes even close. Local people. Local news and events. Local sports. Local matters. For all things Lloyd Eastern area, this is Live with Kurt Price. Hey, welcome into the new Lloyd Mr. Nissan on this gorgeous Saturday morning here in Lloyd Minster. A new Lloyd Mr. Nissan now located on Highway 17 South in a beautiful brand new building and a beautiful lot that is full of brand new beautiful vehicles as well. Inventory has never been better. You can get into a vehicle right now at just $59 a month. And right now the boss is away. So with him away, the employees have taken over and that means you get employee pricing, but only till he gets back on Thursday. So it's a great way to get into your new ride here at the new Lloyd Mr. Nissan. And we've got Avery Shove here today till two o'clock as well. We've got a free barbecue happening from 12 till two. So we hope that you'll uh, come down and uh, join us and have a look at uh, some of the awesome vehicles that are on the lot, whether you're looking for new or pre-owned, $59 a month right now at the new Lloydminster Nissan. As I mentioned, Avery Show from Rust Valley Restores is our special guest today, but that doesn't mean that Brandy Schwank is any less special. She, she's here from I Love Alberta Boobs, and we've got uh, Randy here, Randy I'm a, Marsh. I'm a little more special. Uh, <laughs> enemy number, prime enemy number one yeah. in Lloydminster from what I understand, but uh, <laughs> but so we've got the good and the bad here today. with, uh, And of course, uh, we're going to talk to... Um, uh, Mr. Shelf, Avery Shelf, about uh, what is happening with uh, Rust Valley Restorers. And uh, I'll tell you, we got a ton of questions, and we've had a chance to visit with him over the last little while here. And you're in for a treat here uh, this afternoon. Superior Water is proud to provide you with the purest drinking water possible, and I drink it because I like the taste. I believe it is Superior Water. And at Lloyd Minster's Superior Water, you can get a beautiful, consistent taste for just $3 a jug. And don't forget ice for that Crown Royal. It's just $2 a bag. Two locations in Lloyd Minster, right beside Sheepskin Loft, and a coin-operated location right beside 7-Eleven, just off Highway 17 South. At Superior Water, water treatment is what they do, and they do it well. Nice to see the sun is shining today. Uh, Meals in the Fields is back for 2024. We delivered our third meal on Thursday uh, to Trevor and Cherise Plandowski, south of Lloyd Minster. Uh, been a lot of rain here, been a lot of rain there, but the combines were rolling on Thursday south of town. In fact, they were kicking up some dust. So it was a pleasure for us to be able to deliver a meal to Trevor and Cherise and their family and their crew. And actually, when guys were getting off the combines, they were shaking hands like they hadn't met each other. They had three combines going. So it was absolutely a, a fantastic day get those nominations in because we have one more meal to deliver plus if you nominate a farmer you could win one of two $500 gift cards for Diamond 7 Meats so thanks to Diamond 7 Meats they supply, they supply the roast beef for the uh, meal we got Sobeys here in Lloyd Minster with uh, salads and cold drinks and uh, fantastic dessert all the time we want to thank new Lloyd Minster Nissan for being a sponsor of that Vical Agro is a sponsor for that and uh gentleman by the name of Gary Malku passed away in 2022. He had attended one of our meals in the fields and he said, you know what? I, I think it's just awesome that you feed the people who feed the world. So Gary, when he passed away in 2022, he left behind some dollars so that we could continue meals in the the field so keep it's those actually, nominations it's, it's coming it's really out. nice when they when people do that it's, it, it's fantastic it's and you like know, it's, it's it's a legacy yeah it is yeah. and it's yeah. his family has really been the people that have followed up with it that's great to it's hear his family the one you know what was important to gary it's gotta be important to us yeah. yeah yeah and he wasn't a farmer he was he grew up on a farm then he became an engineer and moved away from this area came back said every year he'd come back at harvest time because he just loved harvest season yeah and uh just said you know what this is this cool, is awesome right? yeah feeding yeah. people that's that's what this is all about so a couple of notes <clears throat> uh, if you're headed out to kid scotty tonight for the lloyd mr lions club medieval feast i look forward to seeing you there i'm going to be uh one of the folks i guess being put in the stocks so if you're one of the people that contributed to putting me in the stocks thanks a lot i'll get you back 
at some point, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> but uh, it's going to be a great night. It's going to be a great meal. And the Lloyd Mr. Lions Club do a lot for the community. And uh, they've put this meal together that's going to be a fantastic meal. But there's also sporting events and stuff like that. And speaking of the Lloyd Mr. Lions Club, Norm Namer and uh, Joanne Camo, they stopped by on Thursday with details on the Lloyd Mr. Rescue Squad Sirens and Sapphires Gala. It's coming up in October. They still have six tables I believe available for that event it's a very important event for the rescue squad because they don't get any funding from government they raise it all themselves and it's a rescue squad that started 40 years ago and it was Norm Namer who told us just how that rescue squad squad got started and how the Lions were involved Graham Howie the late Graham Howie he we were in one his office one day and he he was writing this up and drawing this and drawing that and saying we should do this because we were all um, EMS or, or EMTs and we were working uh, uh, ambulance at the time and uh, we just you'd go out on a call and you'd have to go and, and who's who's gonna who's gonna extricate and, and so it was a really complicated thing to get someone out of a vehicle um, and so he had approached the Lions Club and they gave him a set of jaws and cutters well they put that in the ambulance on a side and the side door. Well, now you're, you're working with a patient, you're working with tools and grease and oil and, and things like that. So it just, it was not ideal, but it, it was a start. Uh, and, that, and that's what birthed the idea of, of starting a, a rescue squad, uh, an individual squad that can go out independently and, and assist. And, and you can assist uh, in, on the medical side too. So it was, it was an awesome fit. Go to lloydrescue.ca to get your tickets. Fall cleanup garage sale is happening today till 2 o'clock at the Service Sports Center. Lots of vendors there, so you can check that out today. And also in Blackfoot today, it is a Blackfoot Days picnic in the park from 1 to 4. $1 hot dogs and popcorn and drinks to celebrate the grand opening of the new Blackfoot Lions Club community playground that they put together like in no time at all. They fundraised for that it's with the official ribbon cutting taking place at one o'clock today. It was, it's absolutely amazing how fast they put that uh, playground together. So they're going to celebrate that a little bit today. BioClean Disaster Services is committed, certified, reliable, and they help you get your life back. Not only is BioClean Disaster Services Lloyd Minster's local restoration company, they're also Lloyd Minster's largest restoration company. So when fire and flood and disaster, any kind hits your home, what you're looking for is someone that's going to take care of your property, someone that's going to take care of your belongings. But what they really, really do differently at BioClean Disaster Services is take care of you and take care of your family. 1-833-246-8326. We'll take a commercial break, and when we come back, we're going we're gonna to quiz Randy on getting his head shaved. Yeah. Yeah. Tomorrow. Yeah. It's probably going to happen. Wavy legs, Fox. Now, do his eyebrows. That hurts. No. We're <laughs> not <laughs> doing my eyebrows. Your eyebrows. No. no. Definitely legs. I didn't hear him say no to legs. Oh, my God. It's all right. We'll get you a Brazilian <sighs> if you're not nice. <laughs> Is it too late to say no? Is it, can, I, can, I, can I just leave? <laughs> well, for 110 years, Lloydminster and District Co-op has been part of your journey. To celebrate, we're giving away a truck built to keep you moving forward. This truck is made for your life, whether you're running a business, exploring the great outdoors, or just enjoying a family road trip. It's more than just a vehicle. It's our way of appreciating you, our members. Join us in celebrating 110 years of community and take your chance to win. Lloydminster and District Co-op, members together, growing community. At Diamond 7 Meats, we work with local farm families to provide a high quality product and a great selection for you. Try our mouth-watering Smokies, pulled pork, roast beef, and more. Made pure and natural with no additives or fillers. We offer custom processing, and our experienced team works for you to provide a selection of sausage, burgers, and jerkies made to your specifications. Take your grilling to the next level with a Yoder Smoker. Complete the grilling experience with a Canadian-made, award-winning line of House of Q barbecue sauces. We're locally owned and operated, and we look forward to seeing you today. It's more than just taxes at LNA CPA. Assurance, accounting, retirement planning, estate planning, business consulting, financial consulting, farm program support, and bookkeeping. But yes, there is always taxes. The team at LNA CPA is committed to helping you achieve your best results and will be there to assist you every step of the way. LNA CPA, with offices in Provost, Vermilion, and Lloydminster. 
Welcome back inside the new Lloyd Minster Nissan, where it's customer day today. So we got a barbecue going from 12 to 2, and you can come down and meet Mr. Avery Show from Rust Valley Restores, and he would love to have you come down and uh, ask him some questions and just talk to him. And Perfect. That's exactly what we're going to do. Avery, thank you for doing this. Really appreciate it. My pleasure, my friend. Yeah, and uh, we got Brandy Schwank here, Randy Marsh from the Lloyd Mr. Motor Club. Tomorrow's a huge day for the Lloyd Mr. Motor Club. We'll get into that in just a bit as well. But I know you're you're wondering to yourself, what is Avery Schof really like? Well, we've been talking to him for the last, I'd say, half an hour here, and uh, he is what he is on the program, and uh, there's nothing better than being genuine. So yeah. thank you for being here, Avery. Hey, I got a clean shirt on today. Don't bug me. <laughs> <laughs> and there's nothing even on it yet. I haven't ate yet. <laughs> Like it drives our producer crazy. You put a clean shirt on me, chunk of food, sit on his leg his mom. Like, 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 <laughs> it just, yeah. So let me, let me, ask, where did you grow up? Like where, where, where is actually home for Avery Show? I grew up in Fort St. John in a little place called Cecil Lake in the middle of nowhere. So what took you to Rust Valley? A Ford truck. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it was a Ford. I'm surprised you got there. Yeah, me too. It's actually it was a Chevy, I think. But anyways, um, it was a series of events how we ended up there. There was some guy running around selling land, and my mother decided she wanted to buy a piece of land, and the land happened to be in Scotch Creek, and she went over there, liked it, bought four or five pieces. And over the course of the years, she sold a couple, and we ended up where my rental business was for about 25 years. Okay, that's my next question. What did you do before, like, your master mechanic on the show? What did you, what did you do? Not a mechanic. It says not, master mechanic. Yeah, don't read everything, believe everything you read. I not, can't not, fix stuff, though. Not a mechanic, he just plays one in his garage. Exactly. <laughs> um, I had several jobs, actually. We had a rental business. I guess I fixed oil field camp shacks for probably... I don't know, 15 to 15 or 20 years when we were in business doing that. And then I worked in the oil industry a little bit. And then I went small inch pipelining. And I did that for probably, I don't know, quite a long time, off and on for probably about 10, 15 years. And I had a rental business that I did. I pipelined in the wintertime and I did the rental business in the summertime for, like I say, probably about 25 years. So what was your reaction like? How how did Rust Valley Restorers like what what happened there to, to I was create at the, right the program? I was at the right place at the wrong time, <laughs> <laughs> and then bang, there you are. Who knew? <laughs> I Mike's son Connor used to work for me at my rental business okay. for a couple of years, and in the process of it of it, I got to know Mike, and he used to come out. We'd bullshit back and forth, and we had the same interests and. We were around each other, and the old producer of Highway Through Hell, Matthew Suchuk, kind of seen a reaction between each other and how we were, and kind of liked it, but he was first gonna do a show with Mike with uh, rock, rock scaling, but the conditions and the thing was that they didn't want him doing that, they didn't want him to have the film crew there, so he found out that Mike had a whole bunch of cars, so he went over there, and it just kind of rolled into that. How many cars were on his lot? Like, in, in its peak, do you even know? Well, there's always some coming and going. It was right around 600. Oh, wow. Yeah, he had stuff. <laughs> um, he sold all of them. He got down to 32 vehicles. He said about, I think, probably pretty tip on the scale at about 100. There's so much stuff in his yard right now, you can't physically almost get into the shop. <laughs> <laughs> he likes cars, eh? Yeah. 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 Well, you guys have, like, like... Well, what I love is you guys will get angry at each well, other. Well, he's a pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure it's him? Yeah. Yeah, it's him. Hey, we get along good, but it's like, no, but it, it, he pisses me off. And I do the same to him. I don't know a show, and he's beat me with a garbage can before on this season showing up. that's coming up. I don't know whether they showed it or not, but he got bad enough. He literally beat me with a garbage can and then jumped on my sunglasses. <laughs> that's real. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Did you buy any sunglasses at no, least? No, you didn't. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, and the other thing that, that strikes me on the show is I don't know anybody who's been through as many rat nests or mouse nests or whatever as you guys have. Like, like at one point you're like, I'm crawling around in rat shit. And you know what? That's real. There's nothing fake. That's nothing staged. That's just the way it is. Mr. Longhair there gets moving around and his hair brushes literally on anything 
And then he probably washed it a couple weeks later after that. It <laughs> well, it rained out, eh? So, I oh, guess. Yeah, so that's probably good. good he's good, yeah. yeah. It yeah. rained, so it got washed. But no, it is true. Like I say, it's just some of the stuff you come across is uh, is dirty. Yeah. yeah, like 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 bad dirty. <laughs> but you just really don't think about it. Yeah. It's, it that, well, that's what I think what people love about the show is it's real. Yeah. Um, how much of the show is real? How much is staged? Well, I tell you what, our show is about probably about ninety five percent real. What are the fake parts? I can't remember. But it is what happens, what goes on, is real, what you see. The process of making television is very interesting, and it would take me about two days to explain it to you. What you see is real. It really happened. As our dear producer says, I build a sandbox, and you guys just play in it. And we do one hell of a job. <laughs> you ever have to go back and refill? Like, oh, we missed that, but that was awesome. Like, can you do that again? No, never, never at all, <laughs> never, never, never ever has happened. They're probably like, actually stop doing that, please. Yeah. Do not do that again. How much hair did the producer have at the start of the season or series to now? <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, ask me how many mirrors he kicked off Mike's car. <laughs> right, Matthew? I put that mirror back on that car four times. <laughs> it's a pretty, it's an interesting process that I don't think everybody could put up with. Again, it's the process of making television is very, um, it's very interesting. Everybody does it differently and it's very tough sometimes. How many days do you guys film out of the year? Three. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. We missed three days. <laughs> really? You film that much? I think that we probably film more than anybody else in history. Why? Every producer is different. We had two of them working together. One guy really liked filming. Matthew was quite a bit better. He knew what he wanted and filmed it right away. The other film just literally everything and wanted enough safeties in it. So the process, how it goes usually, everything that you see usually gets shot three times. Okay, what you do is 100% the real live thing. Yep. Okay, yep. and then you'll go through part of the process again and they'll get a safety and then you'll get what's called a wide. Depending on how many cameras you have. When you see one guy show up with one camera, you just cringe because you know it's gonna be a long day because you only <laughs> got one camera angle. So when you're looking at something and you see it shot here, then you see it shot over there and then shot down here, three different angles. So if you got one guy, he busy shooting every angle. You get to do it a couple times. So if you got three cameras, usually just do it twice. You do the original one, and then you'll come back, and then you'll do it again. It's called a wide. So you get kind of the interesting pictures where they show them right there, and they show something over there, over there. And then they cut it all and put it together. It makes for a very trying day. And then sometimes if it isn't eventful enough, they'll aggravate your life enough until you end up breaking something, and then they're happy. <laughs> well, that that's what's awesome on the show is, like, it's not like it's all roses. Like, if things go wrong. I mentioned to you the uh, Demolition Derby, where you guys didn't even get the car in. And then somebody was blamed. I can't remember who it was, but somebody was blamed for not putting oil in it. I can't remember. It was remember you. It was your fault. <laughs> it was absolutely. It was your fault. fault why there was no oil in that car. <laughs> but like that, like, like maybe they, maybe. I like, like got it, stuck with that. Why? Because I was the master mechanic. <laughs> it wasn't another eight people in there doing shit, but I got stuck with it. Why? I did check the oil in that car, to be honest, but I'll tell you what. These motors were all put away, and the guy down at the shop put them away, drained all the oil out of them. I checked the oil in the motor. The dipstick come up with the oil in it. So I didn't think nothing of it. But again, there was another five people there, including Mike, who could have checked it too. When I pulled the dipstick out, the dipstick, somebody put the wrong dipstick in it. And it was about that much longer. Right. And the dipstick went down in and laid on the bottom of the pan and showed oil in it. The little bit was left in the pan, so I pulled it back up and it came out wet on the line. So I thought nothing of it. And I got labeled with that one for the rest of my life. <laughs> but that's what happened. Yeah, because Believe that, it or not. That happened like, what, five years ago too? And you're still getting yeah. blamed for it. <laughs> It'll never end for the rest of my life. But that's the truth of what happened to that. <laughs> but I think that's what people love about the show is that if, if it could happen to if it could happen to me, it happens to you guys yeah. all the time too, right? Well, if anything could go wrong, it'll go wrong. There's failures, and there always will be, and that's just the way life is. It's just it's failures. We have a few of them. <laughs> is it is it your full time job now? Doing what? Avery, the show. 
Like, is it is it 100% this is what Avery's It doing? was a full-time job. We haven't filmed a whole lot in the past, I don't know what, probably three years, I guess, three seasons. Uh, the networks and whatever, they did not bring the new series out, or the new series, I guess, the new episodes out for three years, because I don't know whatever they were doing. They were waiting for the right time, I guess. But in the process of doing that, we've started doing some YouTube stuff, Mike's YouTube channel, mm -hmm. Wild Man Garage Mine, and we do stuff on YouTube, then me and Mike get together and go do some stuff together and kind of do our own thing and come back together, and it's... It's, it's, it's been actually quite quite relaxing, actually. Well, yeah, you, nice. you guys just actually just took a trip across Canada. Well, Mike drove across Canada. Yeah. Because <laughs> Mike, Canada. Mike can't fly. No, Mike's scared of airplanes. <laughs> Maybe somebody might throw him out. <laughs> Gee, I wonder who. Yeah. <laughs> Get my parachute in with nothing in it. <laughs> he wanted to drive across Canada. I drove across <laughs> Canada almost with him last time. I'm good. We drove across the wintertime with that rickety, well, that Chevelle wasn't rickety, but it was cold. I had one side of the air vent blocked off, get enough heat on the window to burn the, burn the uh, ice off the window. It was, uh, it was an interesting adventure. <laughs> so you did it in the winter? Why wouldn't you do it in the summer? It's because we're idiots. Okay. <laughs> Just clarify. Self-aware, though. It's yeah. Yeah. Hey, we ended up getting into warm weather. We got to Toronto, went to Las Vegas, really warm in Las Vegas. We drove from How'd you get to Vegas from Toronto? I was in a car. <laughs> okay. We drove. Well, yeah, but you made it sound like it was really fast. Like, oh, we got to Toronto, went to Vegas. Well, it was a Chevelle. Well, the speed limits were different, eh? So sometimes it's faster than others. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we drove from sunny downtown, Salmon Arm, to Toronto, from Toronto to Las Vegas, and then I flew home. I was good. <laughs> That, that would be a, be a lot. Yeah. Well, yeah, it was. It was me and Mike just looked at each other enough driving. It was good. We had fun, though. I'm glad I did it. It was. It was a great, great adventure. How long was the trip? Too long. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know what day it is today. Come on, these are the things like women want to know. There's women watching right now. Seven days. <laughs> we did all that in seven. Actually, no. No. <laughs> it's probably. It was probably just about. I think Mike was gone just about almost three weeks and I was with him for just about two. That yeah. makes more sense. Yeah. yeah. It was a long, it, it was, it was very interesting. It was uh, something that I'm glad that I did. It was, it was, uh, you have to see the country, meet a pile of good people throughout the course of it. It was, it was really, it was exceptionally interesting. When you fly, are you recognized at the airports now? Very you? little. <laughs> Except last time. Yeah, I want to hear the story about Salt I, yeah, Lake City. I, yeah. well, Salt Lake City. Well, I don't know what happened to Salt Lake City, but I tell you, I'll tell you a funny story. We were in Quebec, and our dear producer figured that we should go to one of his friends' breweries. So I partook in a few beverages, and I was having a lot of fun. And of course, I was dressed right to the nines as usual. Looked like somebody drove me through a knot hole backwards. I won't say what airline it was. Anyways, I get on the plane, and I'm just. I'm in a fairly happy mood and my bag and I'm just look like somebody pulled me through a knot hole backwards. I get in there and I like, when I do fly, sometimes I get the opportunity that I do fly first class and I like having the very front seat. So the door was open at first class. I grabbed my suitcase. I walked in there. I just hair everywhere, whatever. And I just hooked my bag into the bag hold. And the stewardess goes, you can't put your bag in there. And I go, why not? She goes, that's for first class. I said, really? I said, thank Christ I'm in the right spot then. Oh, my God. The, 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 the woman sitting in the next seat just about come apart laughing. And ended up I sat with her mother that just got the knees replaced. But it was funny. She knew who I was. The stewardess was very quiet. <laughs> they didn't give you any cookies there? No, the no, we ate good, actually. There's yeah. good food on there. Usually, yeah. Good, good food. Yeah. Well, it may be because you were wearing your rubber boots. Do you wear those things everywhere? He's yeah. doing them right now. Yeah. He's yeah. using the boot as a pocket. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You like that? That's sexy, actually. And I, and I also <laughs> want to know if sock money is a real thing. Well, you know what? That's a story, too, right there. <laughs> I want to hear it. Like, why are you encouraging this? <laughs> I don't need much encouragement. <laughs> Hey, this might be something that Randy and I want to start doing. Yeah, maybe like, we want to start a trend. I tell you what. Trend. Okay. 
How that sock money wallet come about when you're young and impressionable, somebody will do something that kind of catches and you like and you kind of look up to. I worked concrete off and on when I was younger. And this great big guy, his name was Don Hendricks. Don Hendrick? Hendricks. Hendrick? Don Hendrick? Close enough. Better known as Rocky, they called him. A great big son of a bitch like this. And we did sidewalks in Fort St. John. Pulling the street board down their street. And then one day I seen him tying the sock always to his steering wheel. And I said, Rocky, I said, what is in that sock? It's, it's all my gold, he said. It's about, he said about $40,000 worth of gold in there. I said, really, why? He says, because every time when I'm pulling the street or whatever, working in concrete, my rings would come on, off, and I lost too much jewelry in the slump. And I figured, that's a hell of a cool idea, putting your money in the sock like that. You're stuff in there. And I had $12, so I put it in the sock. <laughs> and a little bit of a value difference here between yeah. socks. <laughs> and as time went by, money is slippery. And when you're out wheeling and dealing and buying shit, you got, you know, a couple thousand dollars on here, three or four, and usually in 20s, it's about that thick if they're all whatever. That's definitely how I shop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got something no. common then. Have you ever hit Mike with the sock money? No, but that might be something new. <laughs> Anyways, I didn't have a wallet, and I figured it was a hell of a good idea, so I just kept it in there, and I've just, it's a tradition that I just, it's something just normal. And it's kind of nice, because the money right now is really slippery. And if you get too much money in there, you pull it out, it just goes everywhere like that. So it's in a sock, it's just pull one out, and it's nice. You, you're a, a master mechanic on the show. Is it mechanics that want to come up and talk to you the most? I have some very good conversations with mechanics. The best conversation I had with a bunch of mechanics is when we were in, we were in Miami. We were at a high, high-end uh, supercar place. And I snuck back there to talk to mechanics, because that's the funnest part. And you go back there, and the first question he asks is, which one of these cars is the biggest piece of shit, even though they're worth $500,000? <laughs> and they all start laughing, eh? I said, what's the most common problem? He says, well, he says, them rich folk, he says, they couldn't drive a sharp steak up a dead dog's ass. He said, they bring the clutches out of all these things all the time. So, you kind of cheated a little bit, and I was laughing about it, because they cheated the same way as you can do on a normal vehicle sometimes back in the day, is they were working on a Lamborghini at Countach, and they just slid the transmission ahead and went back in there and changed the clutch and the flywheel and just kept the transmission hanging there and then slide it back as it takes a process of, I don't know, another two hours probably taking some other shit off there to pull a tranny out because they're kind of a little bit interesting. So I'm going to pull a motor out of some of them or whatever. So we just sat, we just sitting bullshit about different problems on stuff. Yeah. But that was, that was the funniest. They all come to the conclusion, they, all a bunch of just typical, you know, working on these cars that are, you know, $500,000 and, Three hundred thousand dollars, and maybe even a million or two million, and it's just—it's the same. It's—it's it's very interesting because it's the same. It's the same bitch as everybody has working on stuff, like you know, like that piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, well, I just pictured mechanics coming up going, you know, that time when you guys couldn't get the frame onto the on the body there. You, did you ever think of doing this? You get a lot of that all the time. Somebody's got a better idea <laughs> all the time. I just did the floor in my shop. I had 398 comments about how I did it wrong and whatever it was done. <laughs> and you guys have commented on my floor. I was told what to do it from the paint manufacturer and said, do it like this. And if it doesn't work, we will warranty it. So that is why it was done like that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, listen, you can meet Avery here at the New Lloyd Mr. Nissan. And there's a barbecue happening from 12 to 2. Come down and see us today at the New Lloyd Mr. Nissan. And then tomorrow is the season closer. And it's also the 10th anniversary for the Lloyd Mr. Motor Club. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to hear more about tomorrow. And we'll hear more from Avery Schof here at the New Lloyd Mr. Nissan. At Jason Arden Associates Cooperators, we're proud to be a top-rated local insurance company that offers flexible solutions and expert advice for all your insurance and investment needs. We'll work with you to tailor your insurance specific to your needs, and we offer investment advice that always puts you first. At Cooperators, one of our core values is to give back to the communities that we live in. Thanks to the support of our clients in Lloydminster and area, in 2023, Jason Arden and Associates has donated $40,000 to local nonprofits, charities, students, athletes, and other special events. How does your insurance company support our community? How can you help support the oil and gas industry and jobs in Western Canada? The answer is closer than you think. Sell your scrap metals to PWM Steel. PWM sells scrap iron to Evraz, located in Regina. Evraz's number one customer is the energy sector, building pipes and plates for the oil and gas industry. 
PWM Steel is your locally owned metal recycler and steel service center in the area. Plus, they're a strong supporter of the community. PWM Steel, your top steel supplier for Alberta and Saskatchewan for 40 years. At CK McKean Roofing, they understand what it took to put that roof over your head for your family. With over 20 years of experience under their belt, they strive to show you that with their workmanship and their integrity. Not all roofing companies are created equal, and that's why CK McKean Roofing encourages you to focus on your most important investments, your home and your family. CK McKean Roofing. Roofers do it on top. We're back here at the new Lloyd Mr. Nissan, where we have the uh, customer day today. So 12 to 2, you can come down for a barbecue and meet Mr. Avery Schoff. Also, I'll let you know about Wellings of Lloyd Mr. Wellings is now offering one and two bedroom gorgeous villas for those 55 and over. This is a new way of living that has come to Lloyd Minster. It is a maintenance free way of living. So what happens is you end up with more time, more time for your family, more time to travel and less time working out in in the yard and less time worrying about if you're away from home what is happening back at home with the big house plus they're building a beautiful clubhouse to uh, bring the community together it is really a community within a community and they're having their uh, open houses on Friday we're going to be broadcasting live there on Friday so if you want to have a walkthrough all you have to do is call Darlene 780-872-8537 if she knows you're coming she'll probably do some baking 780-872-8537 when can we go there what's your cooking anything good <laughs> I was just thinking you I probably like, fit hey, right hey, in Darlene Darlene I like apple turnovers okay <laughs> and he hasn't spilled anything on his yeah, shirt today so he's all dying to do it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Avery Schof is here from Rust Valley Restores, and uh, he's going to be here till 2 o'clock. And then tomorrow, uh, he joins the Lloyd Mr. Motor Club and their season closer, Randy Marsh and Brandy Schwank are here. Uh, Brandy's with I Love Alberta Boobs, and uh, Randy is the president of the Lloyd Mr. Motor Club. Head honcho. Head honcho. There I is founded, no president. I founded the club, so they said I can make my own name. Yeah. What? So you I'm get to do that? <laughs> yes. Oh, I want to be something different then, too. Queen Bee. <gasps> yes. Okay. That's my new title, Queen <laughs> okay. Bee. Queen Bitch. Oh, I actually like that better. <laughs> tell, tell us about the Lloyd Mr. Motor Club and, and this season closes. So, um, yeah, this is actually our 10th year. So, um, uh, 10 years ago, I actually did have more hair than I had now. I know, it's hard to imagine. Yeah, me nerve. too. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, um, so... We're brand new. No, I'm good. <laughs> uh, no, it's just, uh, yeah, we're doing our 10-year season, uh, season closer, 10th anniversary. Um, trying to raise money for I Love Alberta Boobs. Um, and we're grateful. Thank yeah, you. No, uh, we've had you guys out a bunch of times before, and it's been a hoot. Uh, mainly because you guys like making fun of me along with the rest of the city. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think actually there's probably a bracket of who can offend me the most. Um, I'd like to see that sometime. Uh, who's winning? Uh, but uh, no, we, uh, we ha had a goal. Uh, so every now and then we, we have, we don't like to have a goal, but I like to make a goal where if we can raise this much, then I'll do this. Or we are raised this much, I'll do that. So the last time we had a goal and we advertised it, we didn't come close. And I'm like, okay, so I'm, I'm gonna say, I'll make a goal. We'll, we'll say, if, if we can raise $5,000 for I Love Alberta Boobs, I'll get my head shaved. I have m totally miscalculated how many people in this town know me and wanna see me with a bald head. Yeah. We currently have 137 potential prizes <laughs> in the, for the silent auction and the raffle. Did you sure they didn't say scalp? Yeah. <laughs> hey. um, that's not including the vendors because we're going to have, uh, we got 15 local vendors that are going to be coming out. Each prize pack has to bring in roughly $35. Yeah, you're getting your head shaved. And yeah. yeah. And like we've and had places like Northwind Radio donated an iPhone 14. Um, we've had all new auto body, uh, donated one of those big cooler, like the huge oh, yes. tailgaters coolers. And those things are love it. I love it. It's this thing. I, I didn't want to bring it out. Um, and we've had TJ's pizzas and Panago pizzas donated a bunch of coupons, hot souls donated gifts to us. Like we've have, I was going through my list and I'm just like, uh, do you guys like me or hate me? <laughs> just adding all that up, yeah. you know for sure you're over that. Oh, yeah, I'm thousand. definitely, like, I'm, my head's getting shaved. So what's it's, your okay. idea to get uh, even Well, it wasn't goal? my idea. I saw it on Facebook that someone said, what if we get to 10,000, we wax Randy's no. head? <laughs> I and want to give him a Brazilian. No! I don't know if we can do that in public, though. Why not? 
I don't know. I if think there might be a law against it. Little. You know, I was thinking I could help you out. I could give some free monograms. <laughs> <laughs> like they'd fit in there. I think <laughs> they would, and they're fantastic, actually. But that's what I thought I'm, too. Yeah, I'm gonna say no. <laughs> We have to get back to waxing his legs. No, I even have a line on someone who's really good at it. Apparently, I think that I think that'd be fun. Do we get him to commit right now? I don't, I don't think. I don't. We could wax your not, eyebrows. No, that is actually another thing that's been going around. Everybody wants we to shave my eyebrows. Well, why not? You look good with one eyebrow. People look stupid without Sounds eyebrows. Like, right? I agree. I'm like, just, just go for the eyebrows. legs. No. <laughs> Sounds like legs is the easy way I, out here, Randy. I don't think I'm gonna have I'm a choice. On your legs. Legs. Quite a bit, to be honest. There's. <laughs> That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That is a no. white, white leg, too. Oh, dude. I, like, have you seen I'm the sun this summer? I'm in sales, dude. I'm inside all day. <laughs> I don't go outside. I can guarantee you one thing. You're going to have less hair than you started the day. <sighs> yeah. Absolutely. Can yeah. we get him to commit for the I, I think for we the should. I don't think I, think I get a choice. To. I think you guys are just going to do it to that me anyways. That sounds like a commitment. I think so. That yeah. Like so yeah. 10,000, so somebody is goal. waxing your legs. As somebody, you're going to do something. And you know are what? you going to be time. around enough that you could take a turn in that? I tell you would. <laughs> I have time this afternoon. I'm sure I could line somebody up for tomorrow. Remember, I day. invited you out here. <laughs> yeah, you're getting more than you paid for. <laughs> Lucky oh one. man! Do you, do you do how many of these do you do? What? Like go around and like, hey, I'm I'm at Nissan today, or I'm at uh, Lloyd Mo Mo uh, I do a few, but I tell you what's really interesting is we don't do a lot of live stuff, and live stuff is very very interesting because it scares the shit out of you. you it just it's you very. You have to behave. You do. Yeah. It's kind of Not like, here. It's Depends. Kind of You're good here, but yeah. it's <laughs> it's probably doing live stuff <laughs> is probably the funnest. Because it's just, it's live. Yeah. And it, it's very, it's, you wouldn't understand it if you weren't doing it before because it's just, it's just, it's live. Like whatever you say, it's out there. There's no retracting it. <laughs> you guys don't do a lot of live, do you? We do live every once in a while. We do it uh, for global news. We did, every time we go there, it's, it's usually 100% live. And they were very worried the very first time that me and Mike went there. Yeah, I wonder because, why. Yeah. <laughs> well, our vocabulary is fairly good, eh? It's very short, but it's very good. We never said one swear word the whole time we were there. They were quite impressed, but they were freaking, eh? That guy was just on the old five minute bunch, just like this. <laughs> it was like an Olympic game, huh? <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's very, uh, it's fun. Yeah. Well, we're, we're glad to have you. And, and Brandy, tell us about, El, like, I love Alberta Boobs. Like, what, what, what do you do with this money where it comes in? Well, um, we raise money, obviously, here in Lloydminster and surrounding areas. And we take that money now and actually give it to people fighting breast cancer or other cancers. We've actually donated to quite a few others. It's very local. Um, it, it is very local. We try to keep it Lloydminster and about 150 kilometers because honestly, that's where the money's coming from, right? It's Lloydminster people yeah. donating, going right back to Lloydminster people. Um, what have you found out about uh, breast cancer over the last, um, how many years that you've been doing this? Like 15 years. It seems to me like there's been big, big strides made in, in preventing death from breast cancer. There, there has. I don't know a lot of it, like the medical side and stuff. When my co-founder was alive, she really kept me in the loop with what was new and what was out there. Um, she was part American, not part American, but like had dual citizenship. So she could get treatments down there that wasn't offered in Alberta. So back then I could kind of see what was going on and what was new and what was out there and what we could look forward to eventually. Um, but we, we did, we lost her in 2017. So I feel like I kind of lost my connection to what's out there. Um, I honestly think it's still got a long ways to go though. Like they're our very first recipient we ever donated to lost her battle. Um, not long after we donated to her, um, people are still dying from this disease and other cancers so how many of you how much money have you guys raised over that time? i was trying to add it up so over the 15 years we're probably three hundred and fifty thousand. i guess That's awesome. not all of that has gone back to the community because when she was still alive we were donating to a clinical trials unit mm -hmm. through the mm -hmm. cross um, and then once she was in hospital and was dying, that's where we realized, like, you have to pay for 
Her husband was paying for parking to watch his wife die. That's something I just can't get over. I don't, can't, I don't understand I that, how that. you pay for parking at the hospital. I can't yeah, like it, it. It just We don't hear. We don't hear. Our parking Not here, but, no. but like, we all have to go to Spice. Yeah. Yeah. It was awful watching. Like, they had to feed their daughter and, like, buy all this stuff. And it was like, all this money that we've been donating to the cross was great. It was helping fast track drugs um, to cancer patients. But I think our little blip wasn't cutting it where it needed to be. So after she passed, we changed and started donating to local women. So she died in 2017. So I guess 2018 is when we started giving out um, money directly to people. And we have no caveats. If you want to spend it on a spa day, you can do that. If you want to spend it on gas or uh, lodging or food, whatever you need, um, it's completely up to you. And in fact, I actually just had a lady, I, she sent an application the other day, and I said, I just need a bit more information because I'm not quite sure what this is about, um, and I need a document just showing you're going through treatments. And she wrote back, she's like, actually, since I sent that application, my treatments aren't going to be as bad. I don't need to stay in Edmonton as long. I'll withdraw my application. And I wrote back, and I'm like, no, your fight is your fight. I said, I don't look at your financials. I don't look at this guy's financials. I don't look at anything except you are fighting this disease. I'm like, please reapply. And she was so worried it was taking away from someone else. And I said, honestly, we have enough. And we just got some big donations come in that we weren't expecting. And I said, honestly, I can help more this quarter and the next quarter than I ever could before. So I told her, I'm like, please just reapply. Wow, and that's... that's you know, it's nice when somebody says that, just looking out and just not wanting all the time, and just mm. it's just yeah. it's just nice. Yeah. But it's also nice for you know to you want to continue to offer that to have enough money in there to continue to offer that at having that much money in the fund. It's nice. Yeah. Well, and even the money that's going to come from this, it was not in our budget for the year. We did our big fundraiser at the beginning of the year, and that's how we budget how much we give out each quarter, <laughs> which this year is the most we've ever given to anybody. We started out giving five hundred dollars to two people every quarter. Right now we're at $1,800 for four people every quarter. Wow. And now with um, another company had did a golf tournament for us and donated 10,000 to us just recently. And now with however much, God, I hope it's 10,000 so you wax your legs. Well, actually um, we already have a head start on the day. So Cat Plumbing and Heating has already given us a $50 check oh. for already written out for you guys. And uh, Darv's Auto Body has a two hundred and fifty dollar check for you guys oh, as well. I love so Darv's. So we, we we have a three hundred dollar head start on the day for tomorrow. That's fantastic. Yeah. But see, now we have this influx of money for the next. Well, we can use it for the next year even too. But this month or this quarter, sorry, is the most applications we've ever received. Oh, and, so this is going to help. And I don't have to tell them no. Yeah, I tell you what, <clears throat> it's absolutely tragic. Mm -hmm. You know, it just I I just can't imagine. You know going through that and you know it just it's nice to live at the end but the body decimation i guess or at the end yeah. of it is what you're what you're left with even though you live but just living with it is yeah i can't imagine i, I can't either i no. can't just can't hey, avery when you when you do this kind of stuff like um how how much different is your life now like when i got into before i got into radio like, I didn't realize there were so many people out there like Brandy that are doing these awesome things. Like, you must meet some incredible people doing incredible things. You know, me and Mike were at the hospital. We did a thing for, actually, I don't know exactly what it was, but it's another thing for cancer. When we were we were in, uh, oh, back, where the hell were we? I can't even, I'm just losing my mind right now. I'm still thinking about that. <sighs> Anyways, we did some stuff at the hospital when we were there, and it was very, it very... It's, it just grabs right a hold of you. Yeah. You don't realize it. It's, it's, you know, it, it, being a celebrity now, it gives you the chance to, to get involved more in that, right? It's kind of nice. Me and Mike both have a conversation about it, and uh, we feel very honored to take and do that for people. You know, they give a little bit of us, they give back to the community, to give back a little bit, and it's, it's, uh, we feel good about it. So how much do you want to bet? He didn't come here because of the fundraiser as much. He heard boobs. And that's 100%. <laughs> I had to repeat it I'll to him twice. I'll tell you It's like this. Yeah. My ears were plugged. He, I, I, I told him it was for I Love Alberta Boobs. He saw that was a judging competition. Oh, good <laughs> lord. Well, you know, you never know. <laughs> Actually, you know what? The one thing that, like, 
I've li- I've always got a little bit of a twisted sense of humor about some, certain things, and the one thing that I've always kind of found funny about people that are in recovery for uh, breast cancer and stuff like that. Years ago, I seen this one lady. She actually had to have a double um, mastectomy. Mis- yeah, and so she got implants. And I, the shirt said, of course they're fake. The real ones tried to kill me. Yes, Rebecca had that shirt. <laughs> that is the most hilarious shirt that I have ever seen. It's nice to be able to have a little bit of fun with something. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. You, you know, have just, to. You yeah. have, you My can't co-founder take was like that. She was... Yeah, it just... You can't yeah. take things. You that's one thing. To. You can't take things too seriously. Like I've never. I've. That's one thing I've always been like. I've never taken myself too seriously. I was at a chamber meeting the other day. My name tag was upside down. Like. <laughs> that's because you're special. We yeah. already talked about we, that. Yeah, <laughs> we covered that. Frankly, didn't New Brunswick is where we were at. Yeah. It took me a while. It just like I say. It just overwhelms and kind of takes you eh, when you think about it. Uh, just so you guys are aware, um, Avery drove out to Lloyd. Yeah. Like they they drove. How long a drive was that? I think you said, what, 11, 1,200 kilometers? Yeah, I think it's 1,200. The GPS is wrong, but yeah. Yeah, it was. It took a while. Yeah, it was kind of nice. He actually <laughs> texted me this morning, and he's talking. He goes, well, what's the population of Lloyd here? Is it 60,000? I'm like, no, it's only like 34. Oh, he goes, he's like, I must be driving in circles. <laughs> it was it's very interesting because you drive down the street, and I don't know whether you're in Saskatchewan or Alberta because you can be neither <laughs> one, I guess. If you swerve a little bit in the other lane... <laughs> Like if you get the same, like that. Like, yeah. like when you get pulled over by the police, are they Saskatchewan or are they Alberta? Uh, we can't get good it question. <laughs> good question. Are the fines the same? Yeah, fines are the same. No, no, they're not. No, they're not. I I've gotten tickets well, on the Saskatchewan side the that are Sask- way more expensive or, than the Alberta side. The oh, Saskatoon yeah. police, when they come and do their patrols, yeah, those ones are definitely Saskatchewan priced, <laughs> and they're way higher than other ones. Well, Saskatchewan yeah. needs the money, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I tell uh, you what, I just I just think it's super cool. It's not something you see every time you go down the road. It's just you look at there's some posts there. And yeah, you seen the four border markers down there? Yeah, yeah, it's, pretty, yeah. it's really neat. Yeah. After thirty years, though, it does wear off. A little. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a novelty. I'm just new here. Okay. <laughs> yeah, let's give them a little bit of a. I would buy it if you buy insurance. Would you buy it on the Saskatchewan side or the Alberta it side? Depends where you live. Yeah, it all depends on where you live. Yeah, depends where you live. Because Saskatchewan is government-based insurance. Alberta is private. Which is cheaper. Depends how old you are, how many accidents you've had. I used to work in insurance. I could do this all day. (laughs) I'm curious. My driver's abstract is you need a little bit of time to look at it if you're going to look at it. But you're BC. They're government as well. So you're probably better off in Saskatchewan then. Yeah. Put it it this way. Like, the Edmonton Oilers have one of the biggest 50-50s in the world. And it gets up to like $10 million, right? Yeah. If I want to buy a ticket and I'm at my house, which is two blocks on the Saskatchewan side, they won't let me. But if I drive across the border to yeah. buy a ticket and I have a Alberta address, I can buy it in Lloydminster. I, just, how, I use my work address for that. It's very, I just find they out here interesting. It uses your GPS though, so you physically have to be in Alberta. And they use your GPS, yeah. Really? Because yeah. I've been at the cabin, like at, in oh. Turtle Lake, and I can't buy 50-50s. Oh, I have to be actually in Lloyd on the Alberta side. Two blocks. I live two blocks. Yeah, I'm like four houses down from you. you know? <laughs> I just, I just find it very interesting. It's just, it's, it's just interesting. It's annoying. It is. It is. <laughs> um, we love the show, Avery. Um, you can catch seasons one and two on Netflix. Uh, three and four on uh, Stack. Stack TV. Yeah, and if you go on in the U.S. or on Motor Trend. Okay. And the brand new one, I guess they aired the first episode a day ago. Thursday. Thursday. Two Thursday. days ago. Two days ago on the. Um, it is on the History Channel. Yeah. At about 6 or 9 o'clock, depending on what time zone you're in. I ain't figured that one out yet, but <laughs> yeah. So that's that's season five. Yes. I've only seen one episode. How many episodes in that season do you know offhand? I can't tell you because I don't know. Okay. <laughs> right. There's eight for sure, but possibly ten. Okay. They, even though we're there, sometimes they change things. There's enough footage made for probably 30 episodes, so... They were gonna. They were moving around. They had a little bit of time. I don't know what happened, but there's guaranteed eight episodes, guys. And I think they're probably the best that we've done so far. And again, is there gonna be more? I don't know whether there's gonna be more of that particular show, but they're in the works right now and having a discussion about us doing something a little bit less labor intense. Like, them cars got the average of probably 1,500 to 2,000 hours on them that you've seen done in uh, one hour. 43 minutes. 43 (laughs) minutes, yeah. So 
it taxes the ever living bejesus out of you and takes kind of the, some of the fun out of it mike is tired of having a bunch of employees he's slowing down i guess he's semi-retired or retired now and but we're going to do something that's just a little bit different i think they're in the process right now of dealing with it why is this season your favorite what do you think what do you think is different about this season i just think that we were just more relaxed and having fun and enjoying finally ourselves. know what you're doing more freedom yeah finally <laughs> Took you how long? <laughs> I don't know. I just, I, I just liked it. I think more. We did lots of neat stuff. Spending more money. Oh yeah. More Mike's money. Yeah. No Mike's. Yeah. We. It. Yeah. We did neat stuff though this year, or last year, or whenever the year we did it. The season that's showing right now, we did some really neat stuff. I don't know if they showed or not. Mike tries killing me on a homemade zip line going across the river. <laughs> I saw that when I they're coming up that. this season. Was it coming seen... up this season? Yeah, I've seen the commercial for that. Yeah, yeah. I tell you what. Did you, did you see him? Was he swinging me out there? No, it just shows you going, I'm going to kill you, Mike Hall, or something. <laughs> I got out in the middle of it, and he's grabbing the line like this. He's going, hey, fat buddy, let's see if you can go right around. <laughs> and did you go right around? No. <laughs> Too fat. But we had fun at my cost. But there's just lots of neat stuff like that throughout the course of it. Are the, are the people who come by the cars real does it like how much of that is like do you have the car is actually bought and it's gone you never see it again as or, michael says buyers are liars i'd say 75 percent of them were sold and the other 25 of the percent of the people wanted to buy them said they were going to buy them and didn't buy them right. but they all got sold at the end yeah there's actually there's a couple of them guy out in manville has a couple of the ones from mike's lot you want to know something it probably a green charger i think we did for somebody out around here somewhere maybe uh he's actually south of town okay i know the one you're talking about yeah it come out really well no but again it's yeah it people are people yeah you have a favorite car that you've done you know i'm partial to the power wagon we did i think in the first season i loved that I, I actually I actually got one here. I had a bunch that needed to be fixed. I sold them all on the auction that you'll see coming up. And I ended up, my friend that owns a marina over there, Cabin's Marina, where I live at, I had a concession stand. I like building concession stands. So I built a concession stand that he had. And I've been looking at this power wagon for about, probably about five, about three years. So he asked me, he says, what do you want to do about this? And I said, I'll take that power wagon he asked me if I wanted it before so me him hawed a little bit about it and we come to an agreement and a deal on it and I traded him my concession stand on a stage for his power wagon so I got one now now it's 100% restored I'm having a hard time not ripping it apart and putting the Cummins in it now <laughs> <laughs> hopefully you'll, somebody will come along and just buy it <laughs> you just can't leave stuff alone eh? it's just not in a person's nature yeah what time do things get started tomorrow? Randy? So um, we're gonna get vendors setting up at about uh, eight o'clock, um, and then. Like, do I have to be there at that time? I am not a morning person. I know. You will be tomorrow. <laughs> no, um, and then uh, vehicle uh, pre-registration starts at about ten, and that's when we would like you guys there. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, the show officially kicks off at uh, at eleven. And uh, we're going to be doing some events throughout the day. There's going to be a sound system competition, uh, an Ooh. exhaust competition, and then uh, the silent auction and the raffle is going to be going till about 3.30, 3.45. And then at 4 o'clock, uh, or leading up to 4 o'clock, they're going to do a quick tally and see how much hair I am losing on my body. I can Apparently. guarantee you're going to have none left. <laughs> <laughs> I still want to shave one of your eyebrows. No, off. it's not happening. <laughs> you want to shave one of his eyebrows off? No, I agree with him. I think eyebrows are super important. For Let's you shave one off. You can always draw one on. Oh, God, no. Actually, I'm really good no. at doing eyebrows. Actually, you know what's funny is one of the... Um, I don't even want to know what you're pulling out. Oh, God. <laughs> right there. I got all the rigging. One of the admins uh, for the motor club uh, on our volunteer committee, she actually does like lash tint and stuff like that. And she's like, if you get 8,000, we'll tint your lashes. I'm like, no. <laughs> she's like, you're not going to have a choice. Okay, well, I have a serious question. Okay. For people out there probably want to know, when you're doing the silent auction, do you have to be there to win? No, so we're going to do it this time um, with the raffle and the silent auction. Um, if you at least leave us your phone number, we will contact you. You don't have to be there to win. Uh, we will contact you, but we're only going to give you two weeks to pick up your stuff. Oh, that's generous, actually. Um, uh, it's because I'm lazy. 
Oh, okay. So, <laughs> now, is that you already got to pay for it before? When you got to pay for it? You you ain't leaving unless you pay for it. But when you got to pay for it? Uh, we have a lot of people that hang out at the end of the event and they'll pay for it then. We well, got yeah. two days to like, pay I'm for it. Like, I'm really good at pay for it. Yeah. I'm really okay. good at winning those, so I'll probably be there winning stuff. I have a friend of mine who's coming out here from uh, Prince Albert area. He goes, yeah, I've got like $1,700 set aside for this. I'm like, are you going to spend all of it? He's like, I did last time. I'm like, cool. Okay. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. But oh, what time is uh, Avery there? And uh, I think you're, you're showing up probably around 10, 11, around there. Because I know you're going to be there through the 11 to the 4. Right after breakfast. Okay. <laughs> With stain on the shirt and everything? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Though I learned a way how to get around that. You guys out there that don't like wearing them napkins on your shirt, there's some light hack for you. Put your shirt on backwards. <laughs> After you're done eating, turn it back around. <laughs> Please. <laughs> well, there you go. You're a free life hack today. Well, it works. Okay. <laughs> I'm just wondering what you do about the little holes, though. Like you have no ventilation, holes, lady. Oh, I see. <laughs> you get going so fast, you need a little bit of wind shear to get to come out of there a little bit. Gotcha. O only gotcha. you would notice that because I didn't even notice. It. Sir, I've been looking at it this whole time, and he's like, "I didn't get any food on me." I'm like, "Yeah, but you got a hole right there." <laughs> It'll happen. If you want to go, if you want to come down and uh, meet Avery Shof, um, you welcome it, Avery. You welcome people coming down. Come on down. Come see what's happening. Come, come on down, guys. Come take some pictures. See what's happening. Get a picture. I'm going to have some merch down there. You can buy a shirt. Oh, you got right merch there, too? Yes. You come down. We'll hang out together. We'll sell you some merch together. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. You yeah. Got, you got merch down Yeah, I do, yeah. And I have a feeling you have shirts that'll fit big guys like me. You know what? I do, actually. Yeah. And you guys, you got a 4X. I got a 4X shirt down there. That everybody told me I'd never sell. I said, I'll sell that shirt. You'll <laughs> sell a lot of You'll those shirts in here. Yeah. Actually, yeah. speaking of, we actually, some of our prize packs are uh, actually catering to a little bit more of the huskier people. And we do have some double uh, X and 4X uh, stuff that's actually going to be on the yeah. prize table. That's awesome. Yes. Yeah. Anything we're forgetting that you want people to know about the Lloyd Miller? Um, no, I just, I, I actually, I just really want to thank everybody too. Like over the last 10 years, it's. Uh, 10 years is a milestone for really anything in this That's a town. long time. It's a long time. Yeah. and It's a decade. It's, yeah. <laughs> well, and I, I really want to, like, I really want to thank, well, especially Nissan and, and Midway, like, we wouldn't have been able to do this. Um, we wouldn't have been able to get Avery out without your guys' help, so thank Are you, you really so much. Expensive? No, baby. <laughs> <laughs> 15 bucks. I'm so sorry I asked. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh. The deal of the day. <laughs> I opened that right I tell you, I'm not horny. I'm not house trained. So there's. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but no, even, even still, like, uh, thank you to the city. Like, I know. <laughs> I know I like to razz on a lot of places and a lot of people and stuff like that, but I really do it with love. Um, and I, I'm really, I'm thankful for everybody. I'm thankful for people that have gone and come back and been out to our shows. Like 10 years is a long time. And for a guy who started a club on a caffeine filled ADHD trip, uh, it's been a ride. And That's I'm just, cool. I'm so thankful for everybody and everything. Um, make sure you come out tomorrow. We're really hoping that it's going to be yeah. our biggest event yet. I know that there's going to be some, I know there's going to be a sand rail dragster coming. Uh, what does that mean? So, just a race dragster that runs on sand. Yeah. Just a big old paddle there, huh? Probably several hundreds of horse, possibly. Okay. Yeah. Thousand, cool. thousand, like that thousand, at least, I think he's got at least 1,600 horse on yeah. this one. Wow. And uh, he's actually going to be putting it into the exhaust competition. I tell you what, <laughs> loud. And I, and I think uh, there's another guy who's bringing a uh, another dragster, and I think we were going to try and see if we can shove him into it because they're like this wide. Yeah, <laughs> before. Get I think that sounds like a really fun idea. You like that, eh? Yeah. Pick on the fat guy. <laughs> yeah. Getting out of, in and out of the demolition derby car. I told you what. Yeah. That's okay. We're going to stuff a uh, curtain to the sand rail. <laughs> yeah. He's not coming back. <laughs> yeah. Again, guys, come on out there. Support a good cause. Come see me. Get some merch. Come hang out. Get a picture. See what's happening, guys. Support the boobs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk to you again on Tuesday. Thanks to our guests, Randy, Marsh, Avery Show from Rust Valley Restorers, and Brandy Schwank. We'll talk to you again Tuesday when we talk about another great cause, the B. Fisher Foundation. We'll be here.